So let's talk about self-appreciation. Now, when we discuss a psychological process and also psychological behavior, we need to use language for that. But, of course, it, it's also easy for people to misinterpret what you mean. Now, what is self-appreciation? And I'll start by saying what it's not. So it's not narcissism, it's not egoism. It's not about, you know, looking in the mirror and saying, wow, I'm so beautiful and bright and fantastic and everybody else is not like me. You may, you may know some people like that, but that's not self-appreciation. So it's also not lacking self-criticism. I mean, if you did something wrong, it's smart to tell yourself, I did something wrong. Self-appreciation is closer to what in psychology we call self-esteem and also to some current writings on what is called self-compassion. So it's basically a behavior which is not necessarily natural, but it's a behavior where you actually learn to be appreciative. Appreciative in general, so also of other people and other things, but that you also learn to direct that habit towards yourself. Because research has shown that when you are self-appreciative, it is easier for you to motivate yourself to do terrific, uh, to do terrific things. And that's why it's a lever. And self-appreciation is definitely not uh, self-loathing, self-hatred, self-abuse. I mean, in my own experience as a coach, I'm sometimes let's say, mesmerized and a bit shocked but by how abusive people can be. If not, if not physically to themselves, but at least psychologically, how there's sort of a habit of talking themselves down. Now, this partly has to do also with our society. Um, we live in a society that is very competitive, that creates an image of winners and losers uh, without making reference to certain presidents that have been elected. But you have this idea of winners and losers. And also, I notice uh, with students that there seems to be sometimes uh, stress because you think you should uh, live up to specific standards. And the media and YouTube continuously tells you how you can be a business person at the age of 14 and, and change the world and all those things, well, good for those people, but unfortunately it may create um, stress and pressure on other people. And that's not necessarily very helpful. This may sound like a cliche, but the thing is, yes, in many cases, in most cases, your happiness depends on you. This doesn't mean this doesn't mean that we should not help people that live under difficult circumstances. I mean, I'm not going to walk up to a refugee and say, oh, you know, just think positive. No, you're going to help those people. But it also means that even under difficult circumstances, it's your mind, it's how you deal with your mind that can help you, you know, to, um, to get out of that and to, to work for, for better situations.